This show is sponsored by PSE Archery, Millennium Tree Stands, Hunter Safety System, Third Arm, Extreme Archery Products, Axe Broadheads, The Chase Deer Scent, and Antler Insanity. <laughs> Welcome to Hunting This Week. I hope you guys enjoyed the two past webisodes. It's kind of a, a pilot program here. We're trying out different things, trying to bring you some good information, some funny videos and stuff like that. And this is our third webisode, so we, we're still figuring this out as we go. Now, today's show, my guest host is my partner in this Hunt365.tv venture, Chuck Campbell. Now, he's the co-host of Reality Hunt Club along with me. And he also has his own show, Hunting with Chuck. Um, he's also the producer, and he's a producer of Junior Turkey Thumper, and he's also just a pro staffer for all the Hunt 365 um, shows. Now, this webisode is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be dealing with how um, Georgia, the Wildlife Resource Department, the WRD, has changed the, the number of days. They've actually implemented uh, 25 days in most of the zones where you can't shoot a doe. And Chuck and I wanted to kind of give our opinion about um, that whole policy that they, you know, that they implemented. Now, they proposed it back in April, and we heard a little bit of uproar. Um, actually had a member call and, and was talking about it. And, um, but, you know, just still didn't get a lot of public attention. They're basing their findings on the fawn recruitment rates, and they're also saying the doe harvest numbers are up. And um, in these meetings, even though they were public, um, there's not a lot of information on the internet. Like I was searching the other day, and you don't see too many news organizations carrying it. Um, so then, you know, last month, around the 1st of August, they, the, the hunter regulations were released. And sure enough, the proposal came out for the limiting the doe days. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read some of the regulations from here. Um, the basic, for most counties, you can't shoot a doe from the 1st of December to the 25th of December. Now, we have what? Two, how many How many zones we have in Georgia, Chuck? Two? Yeah, the north zone and the south zone. Yeah. And they, they do break it down by counties, too, but the general, general majority of counties, you can't shoot a doe between the 1st of December to the 25th of December. Now... In their in the regulations, they actually try to explain why fewer either sex days. Um, the, well, like I said, they said the fawn recruitment rates are down. The number of fawns that survive into the fall have declined in all five of the regions that they monitor. They're saying that this declined by about 26 percent. They also said that the doe harvest rates um, have increased by 13 percent over the last several years. That's over several years. That's not 13 percent last year, and um, and they're saying that out of the deer harvests, out of the deer harvested, the 65% of them are does, which I believe that number is pretty pretty good. Now, um, they go along in here and they talk about why they're reducing it and all this, and it really doesn't come out with a good reason other than they had a couple, they had a bad farm recruitment rate for last year, and. Um, you know, they also, before me and Chuck start discussing this, I want to add a couple more things uh, from this article. It also says, um, one of the things they have, why not reduce the bag limit? In this article, they talk about the harvest data indicates that most deer hunters, they say 93%, kill two or fewer does. Um, so they say if we change the bag limits, then that's not going to help out the population. So we're going to discuss why taking 25 days away, is that going to really help the population? And they also talk about coyotes. Now, quality deer management, a lot of these universities that have these um, wildlife biologists, the big push, Dr. Deer, the guys at University of Georgia, the big push the last few years is, last two years, is studying predation on the deer numbers. So it's like the, it's like the WRD got a hold of a couple of these studies, and now apparently we have a real bad coyote problem in Georgia, plus the deer number. So they decided to implement this policy. Now that's all I'm going to say. You can go to Georgia DNR's website. I'll give you a link right here and you can download the PDF that has this article in it. Alright, now with all that said, Chuck and I are going to talk about it. 
I tried to go over the pros and cons. I couldn't come up with many pros on this situation. I don't think this is the way to best handle it. If there is a problem, I don't think limiting 25 days. I can't can't really think of some of the big states that have big bucks that do that. You know, it kind of refers back. We used to do this in the 1980s when we started hunting. But anyway, some of the cons, um, most kids get Christmas break before 25th. So some of those kids that hadn't hunted much all year, they're not going to be able to shoot does. Another thing is, is um, what happens to the hunters that don't get vacation time and they only get Christmas break? They can't hunt. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, what about the economy? What about the deer coolers? What about the hotels and restaurants because you can't shoot those? I think they're going to take some impact. Um, what about game managers? It's hard enough to manage your doe numbers now as it is. Now you're taking 25 days. I don't know what percentage of the season that is, but that's a pretty big chunk. Um, and personally, I don't think some of the Georgia hunters, are, they're just going to ignore it. So is it really, do you really think these policies are going to work, Chuck? Well, you, you went through a pretty good list of, <clears throat> you know, questions about what's going on. But uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to point out when you were going through the statistics earlier is is that uh, the state's saying that the overall harvest is going up in terms of numbers, but the, the per hunter – uh, two or less deer yeah. per hunter. I mean, that's just been that number for a long time, Trey. Ninety-three percent so, is what they're saying. So the only way, only way to go up on a harvest, and these hunters are still averaging two does per hunter or less, is to have more hunters. And so, you know, maybe the state has um, a case in the sense that we need to lower the per hunter rate because if if any amount of hunters just all of a sudden went off starting, trying to kill 10 does a year and they could see that many and shoot that many, um, I mean, it could, it, could get, it could go over the top pretty quick and not necessarily by the whole state. I mean, any individual region could see, you know, a harvest problem because of more hunters with a bigger bag limit. You know, for some reason they decided they wanted to execute that bag limit uh, you know, could they, number one, could they, number two, uh, what would that do in that pocket of the state or that region of the state? I don't know, but the tactic that they are using isn't reduce the tag limits, it's reduce the hunting days. And so, uh, I just don't feel like that that's going to work well. I still think that the, the, the hunters that want to harvest a certain number of does, They'll just do it earlier. They'll do it later. They'll find a way. You know, they they'll they'll have their goal in mind of I want two does or I want six, whatever that number is, <clears throat> and they'll just do it in different parts of the season. Let's let's talk about they talk about the fawn recruitment down. Now, you know that's a statistical model. They go out and monitor. They said five regions, and they basically they march or doze and stuff and they've got a statistical model they put into equation it's the same way with turkey pulse you know they have a statistical model and they're saying last year's was down well you and i've discussed before that the drought meaning you know we had a bad drought last year and because of the bad drought we had less food less food equal um less healthy herd therefore less fawns and stuff like that do you we both agree that the drought did cause some of the fawn pop you know they had singles instead of twins you agree with that right yeah i think that the the drought had a bigger effect on the the deer in our area than anything and uh when you talk about the carrying capacity of land uh and you talk about that the last two years georgia was the uh, driest place in the nation behind texas yeah. in terms of average rainfall and deficit rain um, we're having a great year this year. You know, I think it's I think it's awesome uh, what we're seeing in our area in terms of uh, fawns and deer in general. Um, but I don't I don't think it's something with this fawn recruitment rate. I don't think it's something you can lay all on the hand of the hunter. And so uh, we're going to have this rule of the 25 days that might be a little bit knee jerk reaction because of a weather phenomenon. Um, if it, you know, we might see it be a one year 
uh, rule where they, they lift it next year. I don't know. Uh, I do think, though, that uh, if the goal is, is fond recruitment, that the 25 days still, you know, just, just like I said a few minutes ago, isn't going to work because the if you're, if you're trying to use 25 days to control the number of does that survive, so you therefore have more fawns in the spring, um, the reason it's not going to work is those hunters are going to find they're going to shoot the does early or yeah. they're going to wait till after Christmas and then they'll, they'll, they'll shoot the does then. They're, they're still going to want to, to manage to reach their, their goal of two or four or six or whatever that goal might be. Yeah, I mean, we, we use our club, obviously. Um, if you follow Reality Hunt Club, you know how we monitor our deer. And we're we, one of our big goals the last five years is to increase the carrying capacity of our land so we can increase our deer herd. And the everything you look at said we should have 20 deer per square mile on the deer density map. And I know for a fact we probably at least doubled that because of the efforts that we have done, maybe even more. And And I just don't. I think more people in Georgia are doing quality management. I just don't see the numbers. And it just don't, it seems, and we, we don't want to talk about politics, but it just seems like they haven't provided enough proof of the, um, of the problems. The areas that are, uh, that are desolate, I don't think there are that many out there. And if they are, then they're in dog areas or areas where, you know, maybe they are shooting their 10 doe limits. I don't know. But, I just, I just think this is a negative thing to impact on the state of Georgia, and I know I'm not too happy about it because I don't like to be told when and when not I can't. I mean, basically, they're trying to take your season away to, to save animals that they haven't really um, justified that the numbers are down. You know what I mean? So. Well, I don't, I'm not disappointed that they're trying to take action. I think that the action of limiting when – when you can't actually hunt something, it's going to do things like hurt the economy. Yeah. So you have a 20 day, maybe a 20, 25 day period where, you know, well, I can't shoot a doe. Am I really going to see a buck? Maybe I just won't go. Yeah. So those people aren't going to be traveling yeah. to the rural areas and, you know, whether it's buying a biscuit or pumping gas or yeah. whatever, that amount of spending might be reflected on those days of travel uh, throughout rural Georgia. You know, yeah. those, you know, it's going to be some type of economic impact. And uh, the kind of disappointing side of that is, is, is does this 25 day moratorium on those, will it be effective? And that's where I'm saying, I believe these hunters are going to, they're going to shoot them earlier they're going to shoot them later. Yeah. They're just going to avoid the moratorium. It's not going to change. Or are they just going to shoot them? They're going to shoot them when they're not supposed to shoot them. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that that will happen. I, I don't encourage that. But but I'm just saying it's not going to, it's not going to have the effect I think they want in terms right. of lowering the number of does harvested in 2013. All right, one thing, one thing if you look at the Georgia regulations – um, they have the part I'll show you on the screen right now. The ha first half of that page in the regulations talks about why they limit in the either sex days, and at the half, the bottom half, they're talking about coyote pro co coyote problem, and um, which is kind of, which is you know Chuck and I talked about it before. Like I said on Rally Hunt Club, we're seeing an increase in our deer numbers, our deer density is going up, and our turkey numbers are going up. Therefore, Mother Nature is saying that our predators' numbers should be going up. And they are. We're seeing more and more coyotes on the, on the trail camera photos. We've had some good discussions about how, how much impact they're doing because we're trying to do our surveys and stuff like that. But now the DNR, by putting this into regulations, they're saying that also have a coyote problem. So what are your thoughts on that, bud? Well, I think the hunters are, are saying – they, there's a coyote issue here. Uh, the article that, that I read, I believe came out by the DNR, was uh, or the WRD, the Wildlife Resource Department, 
uh, basically said, we're not sure there is a coyote problem. If there is, we don't know how, how big of an impact it's really making on the fawn mortality rates. And some of the reasoning was uh, that the coyotes, you know, move long distances and they're in pockets of the state. And, you know, maybe this pocket has a problem, but that, that's, that region doesn't. It's just kind of hard to put your thumb on. Um, so I'm not sure I like the article in the sense that it's kind of like uh, maybe they're trying to put too much weight on on the hunter. And uh, yeah. I don't think it's an individual hunter. I think that, uh, like going back to the statistic from earlier, if it is about the hunter, it's about the fact that there's more hunters. Right. And you know, so if, if it's two times 10, that's 20. If it's two times 100, that's 200. Right. And so the Georgia statistics are saying the average hunter gets two or less yeah. does a year. Right. And I think, you know, if you think about their freezer, how many are they going to fit in there? That's right. You see what I'm saying? And so um, uh, you got the drought. You definitely have coyote problems. And, and I wouldn't disagree with the state that they may be right that, if some parts of the state have a bigger issue than other parts of the state. Right. But I bet if you went back and you looked at where those coyote problems are, those are probably the higher deer density areas. I agree. Um, coyotes are going to flourish where food is. Well, that, yeah, it's mother nature. I mean, you're not going to have 10, 15 coyotes on a, a deer density of 20 per square mile or less. Okay, just coyotes got to eat, you know? And that and, and kind of brings us to a point of, a 25-day moratorium across the entire state of Georgia. Right. Uh, but they don't want to enact uh, any kind of, you know, I don't want to call it rule or program. Maybe program is a better word. They don't, they don't want to address a coyote issue across the state as a blanket issue, but they'll 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 right, put right. A, a moratorium across the state right. as a blanket issue. So that's another reason that you know. I would probably prefer not to have the 25 day limit. I'd really prefer to have, if they want to reduce the doe harvest, reduce the tag number. Yeah, I agree. The, um, one thing we'll say, I don't think, I don't think hunters know about this issue yet. To be honest with you, I actually think there's going to be hunters hunting between the 1st of December and the 25th of December that are actually going to be ignorant on the subject, honestly ignorant. If they kill a doe and they get caught or something, I just don't think there's a big enough uproar on this whole whole policy. I think once the season begins, you're going to start to read more and more about it. So yeah, you may see some more uh, you know outrage to what the rule is. Um, I think maybe a little bit of it is it's just the fact hunters are they're like, well, you know, I'll just make plans otherwise. I'll I'll plan to shoot mine before the end of November. Uh, You've got five weeks of bow season, a week of muzzle loader, and then you got probably five weeks of rifle season before December first. Yeah. So you're talking about eleven weeks of hunting, and if the average hunter is only taking two, two or less, less a year, that's plenty of opportunity to me to get it before December first. And that's why I'm saying that moratorium. I just don't think it's going to have the effect that the state's hoping for. Do you think they're going to do it again next year? I don't know. I think that uh, uh, Georgia's got an abundance of rain, at least in our area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we might have gotten three years worth of rain in six months. Um, so that's definitely, the moisture definitely helped. Um, we've seen uh, in photos uh, from the from our area uh, a return to, you know, two. And sometimes right. we, had, we had a photo with three three right. fawns in one photo uh, with the, you know, the doe and shed, shed triplets. Yeah. So uh, I think the drought really had the bigger role in this, more than coyotes, more than hunters. And uh, so. I'd like, I'd, I'd like to see them lay out their case a little bit more. You don't see a face involved with this. What's the state's biologist saying? You don't see him, you don't hear him quoted. You don't hear him saying, this is the research. This is, you know, it's just, they're throwing it out there saying we're going to do it. I just don't, me being an engineer, I don't see the case for it. And 
I don't know if there are enough hunters are going to complain, but if they can do this, what what are they going to do next year? You know, that's the uh, you hope they you hope they don't. So this is um. You got anything else to add before we close up? Oh, uh, you know, I don't I don't I don't want to come across as picking on the state or the DNR. I think that you know it's their job to to manage that resource, and uh, I don't know what you know what tools or policies are available to them. Uh, they may be doing the best with uh, with what they're what, what's in their control. So uh, uh, I've been in a couple of conversations as to you know can the DNR or the WRD really reduce the tags or does the, does the state Congress have to do that? Yeah, and so yeah. if the if the Wildlife Resources Division can't reduce the tags on their own, uh, this may be the only choice they have, the only way that they can kind of try and combat that. Uh, and you got to be glad that they didn't shut it down on Thanksgiving weekend because that's going to be a huge weekend for families and kids to be out. It's also going to be a huge weekend uh, for people harvesting does. Well, there was enough outcry because originally it was planned from the 1st of December to the end of season, which would have been 15th of January. So apparently enough people complained about the Christmas break. They got they got till Christmas Day. So anyway, um, this is a different type of... Um, show than we normally do hunting this week. Um, this is my opinion and Chuck's opinion. Um, come to Facebook um, and YouTube too and leave us your comments. Tell us your opinion, what you guys think of all this situation. And um, I thank Chuck for joining me. Um, I think the last time we did this was a, another Georgia policy that um, they brought up and um, had a good time doing using the Skype. Hopefully we can get him more in here to do some more topics and make hunting this week a little bit better. So um, thanks for watching Hunting This Week, and we'll bring you another webisode soon. And leave uh, seriously, leave us your comments. I want to hear what your feedback is on this policy that the Georgia DNR is enacting. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned. If you like this show, watch our other shows at hunt365.tv. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button on the screen or connect with us and receive notices of all our new episodes by liking our Facebook page.